Are you looking to level up your author business? Are you pounding your head against a wall, wondering what your next step should be? Then join me, Daniel Wilcox. And me, Sasha Black, as we haul ass each week in a bid to level up. Level up. Come along for the ride as we delve deep into the business of writing, craft, entrepreneurship, and every level of the author journey. This is the Next Level Author Podcast. Hello, Achievers, and welcome to the Next Level Author Podcast, a podcast where we hold each other to account and track our step-by-step progress as we level up our author businesses. My name is Sasha Black, and here with me every week is... Daniel Wilcox. Yay! And this is episode seven. I added that ad-libbing. See what I did there? Improv. Nice. Good bit of uh, improv. It just came out of nowhere. Just slapped just me around the face. just came out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so housekeeping. Um, do we have any comments from last week, <laughs> Daniel? Uh, we've got one on our YouTube from Yanni, who says, you guys talking about diet. Here's me chugging down a Red Bull, Dairy Milk, Giant Buttons and Crisps. <laughs> There's no weight loss here. Yes, no, there's definitely no weight loss for me either at the moment. But I have made a decision, which I did just tell you about off air, which oh, is, sure. um, yeah, so essentially what I've decided is um, I am obviously hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging a lot of time at the moment because I have a six-year-old in my house. Um, and while my business is not thriving with the lack of time that I've had, it's also not dying. So what that tells me is I have obviously not been using my time effectively. And it also means I can probably afford to lose a little bit of time when we go back to normal working hours. And so I am going to dedicate two mornings a week to either going to the gym or finding another class or something like that alongside my other two training sessions, which I do for Taekwondo. So I'm hoping that by having four training sessions a week I will start to shift some weight so yeah that was my decision now Dan tell me about the comments in Facebook so I apologize for people who didn't get a chance to comment this week because it was totally my fault that I didn't actually put the post up and I'll be doing it after this episode but I realize that's a bit too late um yes self-flagellation yeah, I mean, for the week oh it's gonna be yeah, all I mean, kinds <laughs> of uh, self-flagellation this week for you only on episode seven I've already screwed up in my defense <laughs> not that I'm trying to defend it because I should have remembered is that I had a very difficult beginning of the week with uh, childcare and incredible tiredness um but still that's no that's no excuse for, for forgetting <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are going to add a segment uh, to our show, aren't we? we? We want to give some love and spread some love. Um, I don't know if we're going to do a shout out each or should we just do one between us? Let's just do one shout out a week between us to start with so there's not too much pressure. So I don't know if... Sure. I don't, I don't know if you want to go first or if I, I can go first. I don't mind. You go first. Do you want to go first? Do you have one off the top of your head? I mean, I, I have one I could say. Um... Well then, do it, do it, do it. Yeah, sure. I mean, this one just comes off the back of I interviewed Jana Moresi yesterday um, for the Great Writers Share podcast. So that'll be airing in a few weeks. And it's not, this isn't shouting out myself. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I went oh, over. Go on, Dan. You talk, talk about yourself. That's well, the Great Writers Share, it's a, it's a fantastic <laughs> podcast. I've heard wonderful things about it. And the host is both <laughs> dashing and charismatic. Um, but no, it's, uh, I mean, there aren't a lot of writers that do well on YouTube. And in talking to Jana Moresi, she was not only lovely and charming and brilliant, but actually checking out some of her videos, there's a lot of good content over there for writers. Um, so I think for me this week, I definitely want to, to check out, throw a bit of love that way because yeah, some quality content for people to learn from and, and grow their author career. Yeah, and I will second that because Jenna is a very good friend of mine and she is sarcastic and hilarious. Her dick jokes are amazing. And she is just <laughs> like, she 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 is my people. I adore her. And uh, yeah, so I, I cannot uh, uh, recommend her YouTube channel enough. I've been watching it for years and she is just the sweetest person in the world. So yes, do go and check her out. Um, yeah, and Definitely. we will do a weekly shout out, I think. Like, you know, it's good to give some love back to the, the community. So Yes. Okay, darling. 
<laughs> it's that time of the week, weekly confession. I've done so awful this week. I hate how happy you look. <laughs> I know. It's, it's so evil. There's I, so much malice on your face right now. Like I couldn't, I, I, couldn't, I can't believe, if you're watching this on YouTube, you literally get to see Sasha's just demonic facade as she's just coming at me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's only because I absolutely smashed this week that I'm like super smug bitch over here. That's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. Go on. No, okay. So Why don't you go first then? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, oh, oh, wait, no, mine, so mine's in a notes file, so I have to get my um, notes out. I'll go first then, since someone's unprepared. Yes, I am. Well, I'm prepared. <laughs> I, so I'll, I'll be the first one on the show. Because I was too busy finishing my actual tasks. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be the first one on the show to admit that they didn't finish their task this week, or even get close to doing their task. And my only excuse is that this week whipped by so quickly that I've got whiplash. Um, and it wasn't until yesterday that I realised that I'd not done any progress towards um, doing any kind of ads, which was what I said that I do last week. So ads, I know advertising, we're saying this, advertising. So studying the educational side of um, okay. looking into it, just, and just learning, doing some videos, and um, I'm on the ads for authors course, so going through some of those. But I, yeah, I did literally nothing. I, to be fair, the beginning of my week was tremendously difficult with tiredness yes i think you have said that already <laughs> up half a night so uh that's my excuse it's not an excuse but i uh, i accept any forfeit that may be thrown my way <laughs> okay so ladies and gentlemen i think we need some audience participation this i want to know a good light this week <laughs> yeah <laughs> um we need we need audience participation so this week not only are we going to have a question of the week we are also going to have a forfeit of the week which our dear dan is going to have to compete next week so let us know in the comments what do you think dan should do as a forfeit for not achieving his task this week um okay so for me i had to do four um launch tasks so now i, I did 23 <laughs> I literally did so many <laughs> um, Okay, so I loaded all of my final book files, which can I also add, I had to do about four times because I, I got them wrong like twice and then I found two more typos and it was fucking infuriating. Um, so I loaded my book files. Um, I recorded a YouTube live um, and I will, uh, yeah, well, so I will be recording another one tomorrow. So that doesn't really count, but anyway, that will be done tomorrow. I sent an email to my mailing list. I finalized all my countdown graphics. I finalized my praise quotes graphics. I finalized tips quotes. So I'm going to be releasing some tips on the run up. And not only did I put all of the sort of higgery, pokery, what's it, around it, all the words and hmm. stuff, I scheduled them all as well. Um, I I have organized and will have by the time I go to sleep have recorded a bonus rebel author podcast episode um, and I also wrote an article to go on Kobo's blog for the launch this week and Amazing. and and this this sort of only half counts towards the launch I also did two more of the slide decks for two more lessons in my course so Amazing. yeah i have now done three and i'm really starting to pick up the pace on them as well they sort of they've started slowly but now i'm like okay now i know i know what i'm doing now so i'm just gonna mm. smash them all out and i think well, i have awesome, done some particularly... other stuff but um i'll stop yeah. because it's getting a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> no it's fine i mean particularly after the last few weeks where you have had weeks where you've struggled it's, it's yeah. obviously good to get you to a point where you're smashing them out and getting ready for your launch yeah yeah i'm excited for you it's a lot of uh, exciting stuff coming up yeah i'll be excited if um you know i sell a load of books <laughs> well yeah because <laughs> <laughs> that would help but uh, yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes it's very frustrating that i can't see um pre-order for paperback then you know how my ebooks are going so yeah that is a frustration so ingram spark please 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 give us pre-order information <laughs> sooner um okay cool so weekly personal update do we have anything else to update this week what we are working on i think you have an update that you're you should really yeah. tell everyone yeah so both the paperback and the ebook for collaboration for authors are now live on amazon ready for pre-order which is super exciting um it's always nice when they actually get to the point where they're both on the same page rather than all over the place and still calibrating um and i have just I, today i got the final edits back from my editor i've gone through them all i've put them through the formatting machine and literally two seconds before we came on to record I finished the first full format so it's now at a point where I can give it to a couple of people and I'm just waiting on a forward but it's 
it's oh. there it's it's a book that is so exciting there is other than get so i think there are like three points in the book journey that i get super excited mm, no that's a lie i'm like <laughs> wait no no i like All other points yeah forget that <laughs> never mind that is there are very like exciting 70 point points point. yeah <laughs> in fact like every single word is just exciting <laughs> <laughs> uh yes that is an exciting point though yes um, oh and the date just for release in case because i've have i mentioned it on this podcast oh i you made you I, mention it last time, last week please yeah. do this is how tired i am i'm struggling this week <laughs> jesus christ you've turned into it's me like i've never recorded week. a podcast before <laughs> um yeah just a reminder 26th of june is when it's going live um so yeah go pre-order it so i'm trying to think about my weekly update i have spent the week shouting at lawyers and shouting at estate agents and <laughs> <laughs> yeah working on my course and uh doing launch stuff and and doing actually funnily enough a lot of self-reflection which i'm not going to talk about on this podcast but i might might tell you about it afterwards but anyway so we are on to the question of the week exciting I'm still a bit, <laughs> so just for the context of everybody listening, I have spent all week stressing <laughs> that, that I, I have asked this question before. I, I went back and checked. We're only seven all, episodes I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, which is also what you said to me. But I, I had to check the list of episode titles twice just to be doubly, doubly sure that I hadn't asked this. I really haven't asked this, but I'm just worried it, it is similar to another question. But um, so I, I will ask it. And, and if it's wrong, then I'll, I'll steal a question from my backup file. Um, OK. <clears throat> OK, so. Thinking about where you are now, what is the biggest challenge standing in between where you are now and where you want to be next myself mm. your turn what? <laughs> no way elaborate um oh i i haven't so asked I, I, this question have i no no we've looked uh in the past yeah but not yeah. necessarily at the the stumbling blocks going forward i think um the biggest challenge standing about it, it's it is probably me um and i think most of that comes down to the fact that you know i've done i've done enough in my life and i've learned enough things that i know that if i want to get somewhere i can teach my way there or i can get damn close to where i want to go um because i or study your way study my way yeah yeah okay yeah um you are because tired. i <laughs> good luck for the next recording yeah. um, <laughs> but no I think because because I years back started looking into the whole idea of the growth mindset and everything else and learning that um you know I, I wanted to teach myself to juggle at one point so I did that I wanted to teach myself to play guitar at one point I wanted to, so I did that I've had quite a few different careers in different places and I'm only you know coming up I'm not even 30 yet You're a child. Um, so <laughs> I'm a child so I know that I've done enough stuff that if I took enough of an interest and wanted to do something I could um but within that, the, the main block is myself. So the, the biggest thing that's on my mind right now in relation to something like this is the fact that I want to get to a point where I'm taking on other authors and having other authors publish under a brand that I'm building, that I'm putting out there. Um, which is fabulous. The big, which is awesome. And it's so exciting. And I have, I have such big plans for it and achievable plans as well. But I think I've mentioned this to you at one point is that I've... I've had a couple of situations along the way where I've over-promised and under-delivered mm -hmm. instead of under-promised and over-delivered. So um, going back a few years, there was a audio, um, audio fiction drama that I was going to put out there. I had the first few episodes written. I was going to go to Kickstarter. I did go to Kickstarter. And then unfortunately, it just went shy of the, the, the final funding mark. Um, and I auditioned actors. I got all the voice talents. I had some incredible people involved. Um, and in the final rounds of auditions, there was one guy, and I still feel guilty to this day, and if you listen to this, you know who you are, and I'm sorry, um, who in the beginning, I think I got so excited about running the project that I accidentally promised a part. And then by the time it got down to the final auditions, someone was better than him for that role. And it wasn't until I saw that other person or I heard that other person in that role that I knew that they would just deliver it in a much better way. Um, mm. But again, because I, 
it, it's a bit of a habit of mine that I always get to a point where I'm running before I can walk with certain things or I'm looking so far ahead that I'm spitballing these ideas and I shout them at people. And particularly with what I'm doing at the minute, I've been very, very, very reserved to myself. And I've kept a lot of things to myself. I'm now at the point where I've got my first reaches out towards possible suspects who might who might start working with me. And that stuff is scary because I'm again getting to a point where I know that I have to be realistic enough that I'm not letting people down and those expectations are set. So going back a couple of episodes to what makes a good publisher, that was part of my swinging point of communication, of setting expectation and things like that. So um, my biggest challenge for me is going to be getting to the point where I can overcome that and I can find that balance between getting excited about what's upcoming and the things that I really want to get excited about at the same time without lifting people up to a point where they fall if something doesn't turn out the way that I want it to. Um, and I think, I think I'm like, I don't regret the things that happened previously. I'm, I, I'm sorry for them, but I don't, I don't regret them because it gets me to a point in which I understand that process a lot more. And it actually took someone reaching out and saying, look, you, you really let me down at this point. Um, for me to really hear that, understand that, take that in and go, you know what, you're absolutely right. And I apologize endlessly. Um, and we, we left it on good terms, but yeah, I think because of that, I've now come to a point where I can put myself in someone else's position and try and view it from the other way around. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think, yeah, that would, that would be my biggest block if I've answered the question. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You have, well, so you, you have definitely answered it because that's your truth and that's what came to you. And therefore that is the right answer. I suppose the interesting thing for me is, is perhaps a part B to the question, to the, to the question and to say, so what, if anything, do you need to do differently going forward? And I know that's cheeky because I am sort of asking a second question, but I think it, it makes it a, a more rounded question mm. and answer for the week. Yeah, I think um, my, so the steps to take going forward are primarily just to ease myself into the process rather than launch straight in because I generally am a person that will come up with a thousand grandiose plans of things I could do. I try and do them all and then I drop a couple of balls and and some things don't end well. Um, I'm not, again, I'm not painting myself in a great light this week. Like I do good things as well and I help other people. Um, But I do a lot of good things thank you uh but yeah i think particularly i mean i mean i'm in talks with someone at the minute about potentially doing some kind of work together and even in that approach i'm being very upfront i'm being very honest and i'm just setting that expectation and trying to um again under promise and over deliver rather than doing it the other way around and that is going to be my route forward is just being clear and not trying to bullshit people into some false sense of something that i can't promise until i know that i'm in a position to guarantee and promise that thing mm. Hmm. but even publishers don't promise so i'm not sure a promise is a thing that you ever have to do no i think i mean i've been in situations before where people have like offered a collaboration or a deal when they've been like you're going to get x and they've you know pulled out a figure out of their ass and then you get to a point down the line where that doesn't happen like it's nice but it's not what you're promised Hmm. and it's those kind of i know you can't you can't always promise entirely and guarantee things in this kind of industry at the same time, it's, it's expectation setting. It's saying, this could be your upper, this could be your lower. This is what I can you know, guarantee you as a, as a promising deal to look forward to. So that's mine. How about yourself? Um, I'm interested so, for this one. Yeah, well, so I, I think I probably had a different answer until you started speaking. And then I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, no. uh, (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So so, uh, now I'm answering a bit on the fly, I think. So I I agree um, entirely that it is me standing in my own way. Um, And I I think I knew that, but uh, that wasn't necessarily the answer I was going to give until you said that. And then I was like, oh, no, of course, the only person standing in my way is me. Um, now for me, I think it is a little bit about time, a little bit about focus and quite a lot about priority. So I had a, I I had a conversation with Mallory Cooper the other day and, uh, I was interviewing her for the Rebel Author podcast and she blew my mind because she runs a 
enormous universe full of like a hundred books, dozens of co-writers, and um, a, you know it, that that equates to a large company. And yet she told me that she does you know half a day's admin a month, and I nearly shat the bed because I was. <laughs> <laughs> wait what and 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 it, it took me a minute because I, I just I kept asking her and asking her because I just couldn't fathom how that could possibly be possible but you know and she she almost was apologetic and I was like no don't apologize I really like being challenged like this because it makes me look at my life in a different way and makes me question whether or not what I'm doing is valid and so I, so to, to clarify where I want to be is I want, I adore my nonfiction. I will never stop writing nonfiction, but I now have a considerable number more nonfiction books than I do fiction books. And that's not really okay for me. Um, I want to have a plethora of fiction books and I want to earn more from my fiction than I do from my nonfiction now invariably I have more nonfiction so I earn more from my nonfiction than I do from my fiction at the moment um so so that's like where I want to be so the biggest thing in my way is that I am clearly doing the wrong work um and <clears throat> I, I don't know what the answer is and so to, my, I can't really answer the part B because I, I, I don't know the answer you know my inbox is constantly near to a hundred and they're all emails that need actioning I I you know I, I do still have freelance work to do but I've got that to a point where it's really manageable and that so it is just me doing my work so I, I, I don't know what the answer is but I know that like like I said basically I think that it's a mix of at the moment a lack of time because obviously we're in corona gate still and um i have a kid in the house all the time um i think it's partly and, and and this is almost my frustration because i would love to have seen what i would have done with these three this quarter mm. if we weren't if, if he was at school i'd love to have seen what i could produce because mm. this was the first time where I'd sort of unburdened a huge quantity of freelance work to free up time. Uh, so I'm, I'm still mourning that. Definitely. I'm still oh, yeah, yeah. completely mourning the loss of this chunk of time I was supposed to have to do, you know, have to do my work. Um, but yeah, so like we were talking offline about how you were, you know, having a whale of a time writing fiction. And I keep saying, I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. But actually, I am in charge of me and my business and what I'm doing. And I don't understand why I am not producing more fiction. So I am standing in my way. And I don't know why. And I don't know how to fix it. But that is definitely my biggest challenge at the moment. I think... I mean, just going out on a limb and, and probably assuming some stuff here, but I think when you're in a situation where there are a thousand things going on, and like you say, there's there's work, there's child, there's quarantine, there's moving house. There's so much oh, yeah, stuff. That, that little little trifle. That, that little extra additional thing, which you know is a massive life task. I think you do get to a point where you can't you can't stop and reflect, and you go into an almost automatic mode of, I'm just going to keep doing the things that I know work, and just keep going forward, and keep going forward and doing that, and like you say, it's only when you do have time to stop and reflect, like in conversations like this, where you do mm. suddenly go, oh no, there is there is a, a problem here. I mean, this is a really trivial example, but it's like, on a very, very, very like uh, tiny level, I, I have a thing where I'll, I'll <laughs> if I'm going to bed, I'll just take my t-shirt off and just throw it on the floor. And in the morning, I'm like, I'll put that in the washing basket. But I don't. I just get up and I walk past it. And then I go back into my room and it's still there. And I ignore it because it's just a part of the thing. And it's just one of those things where it's like, if it's not really a problem, then you don't do anything about it. Mm. So it's only when you acknowledge it, it's a problem that you start looking at a way to fix it. Um, I am interested. You said uh, that wasn't how you were going to answer your, your question originally. Or did you wrap that up within what you were saying? Um, yeah. You also know what other angle you would have taken that. A little bit. Um, I think the well, yeah. So it is definitely about the the, the fiction side. Mm. For me, it was more that where the, my biggest challenge was um, 
kind of how to split the business, how to how to do more of the marketing and branding and co at content outpouring, not books, but the content marketing type, you know, how to really get the readers, you know, build your mailing list, that kind of stuff. I was more looking at the tactical, um, yeah, yeah. yeah the, and this is, this is very ironic because I'm looking at, you know, I, I wasn't really looking at the root. I was looking at the symptoms, not the cause. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and so as soon as you started talking, that's why I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. This might be a, a question for the other side too, because you can get super granular on this, but going back to the conversation I had with Jenna, obviously she's, she's got three books or we'll soon have three books out and she has this massive platform and she's making great money from her books. People that I've interviewed like Craig Faulkner, he has nothing online, no right. content marketing, absolutely nothing. Yet he has this hungry audience that when I put up my episode with him, it was the biggest downloads that I'd had out of all of my episodes because, and people were literally, his fans were reaching out to me and going, thank you. I was looking for something on him online, but there was nothing. So there are ways to make it without having to pour out all these different content things and everything else, but it's, it's finding the thing that works for you. Um, and then just to I wrap this up and go back to, go on, did you want to say something first? Well, I was just going to say, I agree, but I think you either have to be creating books yeah. or 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 doing the engaging mm. whilst you're doing the book slower in the background and if you look at those two examples craig is creating the books and jenna is doing the engagement but at that point craig was only writing a book pre pretty much once every 12 to 18 months okay enigmatic i don't i don't understand his books yeah. are quality I'll give yeah that. well there are no um, rules and this is a thing no. but but you know you have the the crux of it is unless I spend the time on either the engagement on that side or the creating of the books, it's not going to happen. So yeah, yeah. go on. Yeah. Anyway, no, I think, would... yeah, no, just bring it back full circle. I think um, for me, people who know me know that I'm, I'm huge on mindset and, you know, being able to conquer stuff and trying to, and how your own mind basically does get in your way. So I think no matter what the example was going to be for me in that situation, it would be, it would be myself because I know that, I can I can push myself hard and I can burn myself out. I can tell myself there are obstacles. I can do all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, if if I want to get something done, I, I try my damnedest to do it and I, I give it a damn good go. So it's it's down to me. Mm. And in, in, in going back to things that are down to us, how are we going to level up our business this week? I am going to <laughs> study some ads. <laughs> 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 Let me bring that uh, one back and I'm going to hold myself to it this, this week. Yeah, I also massively failed to think about this. Um, I am now two weeks <laughs> out from my launch. So, uh, but I did manage to do a, a shit ton of launch stuff. I, I think, what do I need to do? I don't know. Part of me is like continue with the launch stuff, but I, that feels very wishy-washy. I'm at a point where I'm, I'm catching up with that now. So um, I think I need to plan out or make some decisions about the order in which I'm going to do things after the launch. Um, whatever that looks like, because I, I have a lot of tasks and projects and then big projects that need doing. Um, and some of them are small and very important. Some of them are big and less important or whatever. Um, so yes, I think my task for this week is to plan out what my uh, plan of attack is going to be post this. So audience yeah. question of the week. I think we need to throw this question just straight out to everybody and say, um, what is the biggest challenge between where you are now and where you want to be um, in your next level? Yeah. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay. So thanks everyone. And we will see you next week. Bye. Hungry for more? If you enjoyed this podcast, you can hear more of my angelic accent and Dan's dulcet tones on our other podcasts. For more of me, check out the Great Writer Share podcast. For more of me, listen to the Rebel Author podcast. We'll be back next week holding each other to account as Dan and Sasha become next level authors. <laughs>